What are the signs of mild scoliosis? Scoliosis ranges widely in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And the condition severity is determined by something called a patient's Cobb angle. A Cobb angle is the gold standard of diagnosis and assessment of scoliosis severity. An unnatural spinal curvature has to be at least 10 degrees or greater to be considered scoliosis. So if somebody has an eight degree or a seven degree, a true diagnosis of scoliosis cannot be made. But a patient's Cobb angle is determined during a X-ray that is taking the lines from the most top most tilted vertebra to the top to the most bottom most tilted vertebra, drawing intersecting lines and expressing this angle in degrees. The higher the Cobb angle, the greater the severity of the scoliosis. Scoliosis severity is measured among four categories. Mild scoliosis is between 10 and 25 degree Cobb angles. Moderate scoliosis is between 25 and 40 degree Cobb angles. Severe scoliosis is 40 plus degrees. Now I like to use a fourth category called very severe scoliosis and we look at 80 plus degrees of scoliosis measured in a Cobb angle. Now, what are the main symptoms associated with scoliosis? Well, the, the symptoms associated with scoliosis can be have a vast array or a very vast arrangement of scoliosis symptoms. But in children, the main symptom of scoliosis is posture. It's only posture. We normally see asymmetry in their posture, in their shoulders, in their, in their waist, in their rib cage. And it's just posture that brings it up no matter how severe the scoliosis is. Now I've seen scoliosis in children as large as 155 degrees. And this child had no symptoms other than posture misalignment. Now, unfortunately, some, as curves become more severe, they're more likely to affect other things, even in children, sometimes functional concerns like breathing restrictions, tightness, stiffness, and pain. But by far, the largest symptom in children is only postural deviation. In adults, the main symptom of scoliosis is pain, which brings up the diagnosis. No, again, no matter what size the curve is. So a patient, an adult patient could have a 20 degree curve, which is relatively small, and a child could have a 70 degree curve, which is relatively severe, the child has no pain where the adult will, could have severe pain. And the reason why, because what worsens the curve in the adult patient is compression over time. And as the curves compress over time as a result of gravity, it causes pain. So in adults, the main symptom is pain, where in children, the main symptom is posture. So when we look at signs, what are we looking for? So signs of myoscoliosis are often subtle in, in an adolescence, meaning you're just going to be looking for postural misalignments. And often the earliest signs could be uneven shoulders or uneven waist, or maybe a little bit of rib arching, or the legs and the arms appear to hang at different lengths and different ranges from the body. The clothes tends to fit irregular, and there could be small changes to balance and coordination. And a lot of these times they could be mild. I mean, you're not seeing significant, but in children, while children are growing and in adolescence, there's never a normal reason to have asymmetry in posture. There's never a normal reason to have one shoulder higher than the other. There's never more a normal reason to have one waist flat and one waist more curved. So therefore, if you're seeing any type of misalignment, there is one thing in common with every severe scoliosis is that it once was mild. So even though it looks mild now, not evaluating it, not checking it and seeing if there is actually a scoliosis going on, understanding that scoliosis itself is a progressive condition that does worsen over time and becomes more complex to treat as it becomes uh, more severe is leading to a more serious uh, condition which can be again much more difficult to treat. In adult patients, what's the sign of a worsening mild scoliosis is pain. Normally the patient will experience pain. So in the adult case, patient, they can slowly progress. Let's say they only have a 10 or 15 degree curve and they go from 15 to 20, which is not a lot of progression, that five degrees can cause pain. So the number one thing that can bring out a diagnosis is pain. So if you see pain worsening, especially over time from like your 25 to 30 to 30 to 35, 35 to 40, we're seeing increased pain and stiffness. That could be a sign that your a curve could be worsening in your body. Now we know when we look at treating a scoliosis, the earlier you treat it, 
because we know scoliosis is progressive, treating it while it's still mild has a great number of benefits. And the biggest benefit is that as curves worsen across the board, as curves worsen, they get more rigid. And as they get more rigid, they're less responsive to treatment, making it harder for the patient to perform certain treatments to get the same results. And in addition, we, we are always reducing curves a percentage of the size of curve, meaning so as curve worsens, and as they get bigger, we can never get them back to where if we were treated it when it was smaller. So treating a curve smaller will always increase the, the results that we have. So not only will treating a curve smaller is simpler, it's less likely to cause pain, it's gonna address the symptoms associated and the signs associated with mild scoliosis. So treating a mild scoliosis is by far the most attractive form of treating scoliosis because you can make the greatest impact. Mild cases, sometimes we can reduce 50, 60, 70 percent. We can have very significant impacts on the size of curves. Where we're treating more severe curves, we're looking 20, 30, 40 percent reductions. So the amount of reductions are nowhere near as significant as when we're treating a mild scoliosis. So even though there's never any 100 percent guarantee when it comes to treatment, we do know Treating small curves will always produce a better result, has much fewer limits on the amount of reduction that we can achieve. So therefore, here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we approach each case of scoliosis proactively. So if we see mild scoliosis and we're concerned about progression and there are symptoms associated with it and there's things that are occurring, we treat curves as soon as the time that we find it as possible when conditions are at its mildest and the scoliosis is at the best possible scenario to get the best possible reduction associated for that person. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.